Do you know how you could grow your email list, email list like weed on steroids? Well, not sure if weed on steroids is a thing, but I think you know what I mean. The simple answer is you just offer one ounce of gold in exchange for your prospects, email address and name. This may even be a viable option in the world of high seven figure sales, provided the free offer is relevant enough for the prospects you are targeting. But in real estate and property sales, in the usual price ranges, this would rather be suicide by a lead magnet. So in my video today, I will cover how you can crush it with email marketing for real estate and grow your list with four simple steps. Now let's get to the first step. There is one key element you will always need to grow your email list for real estate. Most would now say sure in e an email sign up form, but nope, that's not it. Yes, it takes, it makes things easier, but there is one step before. The essential key element is the right offer. If you had the perfect free offer that aligns perfectly with your seller or buyer prospects needs, wants, problems, pains, etc., the prospects would beg you to give it to them. They might say something like, shut up and take my email address. It may even go so far as that you wouldn't need any eyeballs and ears, aka traffic, to make this offer known at all. You could just mention it to one prospect and it would get eyeballs and ears just by word of mouth. This free offer or ethical bribe has many names like lead magnet, freebie or free giveaway. The not so unique but pretty popular one in real estate is the free home valuation to get seller lead contact information. But there are also others like a free service, a free online course, a webinar, a checklist, a quiz, a guide, a free consultation and many more. And what do you think is the only success factor that influences the chances of you growing your real estate email list with high quality leads? You know, offering one ounce of gold in exchange for an email and name may get you opt-ins like crazy, but only a tiny fraction of them will be qualified serious sellers or buyers or both. And to be relevant, you need to know the type of real estate lead you want in your email list. Are they unaware, ice cold, problem need aware, cold, solution aware, warm, product aware, hot, or even most aware, hottest? Each awareness level would need a different lead magnet or free offer. So the only one success factor that influences the chances of you growing your real estate email list with high quality leads is how relevant the lead magnet is to the type of prospect you target. Since giving away ounces of gold isn't a viable option, you likely will go broke. We need other means. With the free gold offer, you would have gotten eyeballs automatically on that offer. Some extra greedy smarty pants probably would have found out your address and well, emptied your gold storage. So since this is off the table, we need the second step, which is getting eyeballs, aka traffic from somewhere else. It's basically paid and organic traffic channels you can use. Paid traffic like Google ads and Facebook ads for short-term results and organic traffic via content marketing, video, social posting and articles for long-term results. Okay, now you have your offer or offers ready and where to get the traffic from. What's next? Well, you need something to capture contact information. That's usually a sign-up form. And without testing different versions of a sign-up form, you will not know what type will give you the best conversions. But there is one rule of thumb you can use to increase your chances of getting decent conversions from the start. So the rule of thumb is this. The more friction your visitors have in using your lead capture form or sign up form, the lower your conversion rate will be. Now, what does friction in using the real estate sign up form mean? Know the crazy long forms some insurance brokers use on their websites? You will think twice before you enter your information there. But you can almost be sure that the prospects that do and send it will be higher quality leads. 
These longer signer forms are not a mistake by some old school marketer who still watches Golden Girls or Magnum on an analog TV. It's by design. The form itself is already a filter to weed out the entire kickers. Sure, the cost of that is the conversion rate going down. Why? Because of the intentionally created friction of the long sign-up form that takes ages to fill out. However, because of the likely higher quality these leads have, the closing rate over the phone with these leads will be likely much higher. Why is that? Because, well, these sign-up forms are designed for prospects with a higher awareness level. No unaware prospect will fill out such a long form. Now a short form sign-up form for your real estate email list will automatically increase your lead conversion rate. The minimum you want to ask for here is the name and the email address. But you guessed it already. You will grow a real estate email list of more cold leads that need to be warmed up via nurturing campaigns. Great, now you have the offer going, the traffic too, and an email sign-up form that may decently convert some leads. You are done, right? Well, no, not un unfortunately not. You kind of never will be done. Think of the growth of your real estate email list as almost a never-ending conversion rate optimization process. If you get a 1% conversion rate, you want to think this is not the best you can do. To improve that number, you need to test the different elements of this funnel constantly. You can test different offers, different traffic channels to the offer and different versions of your email signup form. Let's stay with the signup form. You can split test it and have two versions of it compete against each other. You can then test many different elements such as headlines, colors, body copy, button copy, long form versus short form, form etc. In digital marketing and copywriting, the best performing elements of a funnel are usually called control. So if version B performs better, it becomes the new version, the new control. Then you run another test and try to beat the new control and gradually improve the conversion rate. If you don't approach this the way I discussed here in this video, you may see now how you may have different money leaks in your digital marketing funnel, meaning your marketing dollars may not give you the best return. And I just scratched the surface with this short video. If you're interested, you can contact me and I can offer you an audit of your digital marketing funnel. And if you want to know about the lead conversions of the top 100 brokers, real estate websites, and why they're pretty bad compared to other industries, check out this video.